Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Thousands of Palestinians held mass demonstrations along the Gaza Strip border barrier with Israel during violent protests to mark the 71st anniversary of what they call the Nakba, Arabic for catastrophe, which refers to their perception of the outcome of the 1948 Arab-Jewish war following the creation of modern-day Israel. European Union foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini has confirmed that the EU, which is the largest donor of the Palestinian Authority's education ministry, will investigate allegations of incitement and hate in the Palestinian curriculum. U.S. officials believe that the Islamic Republic of Iran actively encouraged its regional proxies to carry out sabotage attacks on infrastructure of rival oil producers in the region that led to the attack on four vessels, including two Saudi oil tankers, a UAE fuel barge, and a Norwegian tanker just outside the Strait of Hormuz. Thousands of Palestinians held mass demonstrations along the Gaza Strip border barrier with Israel during violent riots to mark the 71st anniversary of what Palestinians call the Nakba, Arabic for catastrophe, which refers to their perception of the outcome of the 1948 Jewish-Arab war following the creation of modern-day Israel, when thousands of Arabs either fled or were expelled from lands that are now part of the Jewish state. During the course of the demonstrations that were held in several locations along the Gaza-Israel security fence, groups of rioters set tires on fire and hurled rocks and a number of explosive devices toward Israeli forces that were stationed along the frontier. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, the IDF troops responded with riot dispersal means and in several incidents in accordance with the rules of engagement that were dictated by Jerusalem, opened live fire toward rioters that sought to damage the frontier security infrastructure, cross the border barrier into Israel, or in cases of imminent danger to the deployed Israeli forces. According to the Gaza Health Ministry, at least 47 Palestinians were wounded, though it was not clear how many of those were hit by live ammunition or were hurt by rubber bullets or by the inhalation of tear gas. Now in other news, European Union foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini has confirmed that the EU will investigate allegations of incitement and hate in the Palestinian curriculum. According to a statement by the European top diplomat, funds have already been allocated from the 2019 budget and comprehensive analysis will begin this spring. Mogherini further noted that specific terms of reference for the study are currently being prepared with a view to identify a possible incitement to hatred and violence and any possible lack of compliance with UNESCO standards of peace and tolerance in education. She further stressed that incitement to violence is fundamentally incompatible with advancing the peaceful European Aspire two-state solution and is greatly exacerbating mistrust between the Israeli and Palestinian communities. Impact SE, which is an institute for monitoring peace and cultural tolerance in school education, welcomed the development. The organization CEO, Marcus Schaff, pointed out in a written statement that the EU is by far the largest donor to the Palestinian Ministry of Education. In a statement, Chef claimed that EU taxpayer money and goodwill have been abused for years, while whole generations of young Palestinians are systematically radicalized. He expressed hope, however, that this study will help put an end to the abuse and finally allow young Palestinians to receive meaningful peace education. Palestinian Education Minister Marwan Awatani did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment, nor did the Israeli Foreign Ministry in Jerusalem, which has on several occasions voiced its own allegations of dangerous materials that are being used in official Palestinian textbooks. It is important to know that similar allegations emerged decades ago, when a 1998 review requested by the U.S. Congress revealed anti-Semitic characterization in materials used by UN-funded schools for Palestinians in both the West Bank and Gaza Strip. As a result, the U.S. Congress commissioned another study in 2002. Other reports were conducted by the Israeli Defense Ministry in 2006, Palestinian Media Watch in 2007, Impact SE in 2011, and the Interfaith Council for Religious Institutions in the Holy Land in 2013. Despite these reports, some of which delivered concrete evidence pertaining to these allegations, the European Union continued to finance the Palestinian Authority's education ministry with hundreds of millions of euros. 
Now in other news, U.S. officials believe that the Islamic Republic of Iran actively encouraged its regional proxies to carry out sabotage attacks on infrastructure of rival oil producers in the region that led to the attack on four vessels, including two Saudi oil tankers, a UAE fuel barge and a Norwegian tanker just outside of the Strait of Hormuz. A U.S. intelligence source revealed that the reigning assessment is that Tehran gave its so-called blessing to the bombing operation near the United Arab Emirates' Fujairah port that is located just outside the Strait of Hormuz. While a U.S.-led investigation is still ongoing, a mounting intelligence assessment lays the blame on Iranian-backed militias in both Yemen and Iraq. The alleged involvement of the Iraqi Iranian-backed militias, commonly known as the PMF, the Popular Mobilization Forces, or El Hasht Ishabi in Arabic, comes amid growing American concerns vis-à-vis -vis intelligence reports that acknowledge the transfer of rockets to locations near Iraqi military bases that are housing U.S. forces. According to an Iraqi military source, the report that PMF militiamen are preparing to strike American forces under Iranian directives led a one-day trip by U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo last month to Baghdad, during which he relayed a blatant warning to Iraqi officials, keep the Shiite militiamen in check or the U.S. will respond with force. A senior Iraqi military source was quoted by the international news agency Reuters as saying, the message from the Americans was clear. They wanted guarantees that Iraq would stop those groups threatening U.S. interests. The message further underscored that if the U.S. were attacked on Iraqi soil, it would take action to defend itself without coordinating with Baghdad. Following these statements, Iraqi Prime Minister Adil Abdul Mahdi said in a press conference earlier this week that he remained hopeful that the U.S.-Iran standoff would come to a peaceful end. <laughs> أن الأمور تنتهي على خير هناك رغبة حقيقة في إيجاد مخارج لهذه الأزمة. A day after Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei insisted that neither Iran nor the United States are keen on escalating the situation into an all-out war. Tehran's top diplomat is actively seeking to convince the international community that the United States is the key instigator of regional instability due to its decision to withdraw from the 2015 multilateral nuclear agreement with the Islamic Republic. In a meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Tokyo, Foreign Minister Zarif insisted that despite the U.S. measures, the Islamic Republic of Iran continues to exercise maximum restraints. I'm very happy to be here at this very difficult time for our region uh, to consult with you on the situation in the region. Uh, we believe that escalation uh, by the United States is unacceptable and uncalled for. We have exercised maximum restraint, as you pointed out, in spite of the fact that the United States withdrew from JCPOA last May. While the Japanese Prime Minister insisted to the Iranian Foreign Minister that Tokyo is keen on strengthening the Japanese-Iranian relationship, he also vowed to spare no efforts to ease tension. That said, Tehran's strategic partners are showing signs of accepting the fact that the nuclear agreement has come to an end. Thank you for watching us, praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.